firstly take us through why is a cyber crime so rampant in Africa? Well, you know, Finley, we're seeing cyber crime all over the planet, so Africa is not unique. Uh, and the cyber criminals, when they attack one region, and if that region improves some of their security, they move to the next. So it's it's really is a global phenomenon, and I'm sad to see it here, but it is shared around the world. What gatekeeping measures should be put in place in Africa, for example, to keep a cyber crime away? Sure. Well, it's a lot about education and it's about the technology we use to protect our machines and networks and our behavior changes. So for individuals, it means keep up to date virus checkers on your machines, change your passwords frequently, use multiple passwords, maybe limit your online banking activity uh, uh, and other steps you can take. In the business side, there's many other security measures, firewalls, intrusion detection, uh, steps you can take to what we call harden your systems. Let's take a look at internet use in Africa. How can monopolies be broken? You know, the best way is, is for the telecommunications groups and the legislatures and other leaders in Africa to focus on enhancing competition in any and every way they can in uh, wireless services, cellular services, internet service provision, etc. Uh, clearly, Kenya is a great example with all the fiber optic lines coming in here and multiple telecom providers, uh, very high bandwidth here now, and rates are quite reasonable, and, and many of the people locally hope they'll drop further from where they are. Well, when you say enhance competitiveness, don't you think that the sector in Africa is rather competitive already? Uh, per perhaps, uh, but you know, there's some, some pockets in Africa where we hear, we're certainly told that some of the internet access prices are amongst the highest in the world, which is a bit of an irony uh, in places where some of the local population uh, is, is certainly not wealthy. So uh, it's, it, the, the trend is towards more bandwidth and lower cost, but I think for the internet to spread further, uh, it would be great to see that continue. In terms of the trends that you're seeing for internet users in Africa, what is the trend like? Uh, it's, it's rapidly moving up and I think that uh, from the year 2000 to 2009, for example, the African region saw internet expansion at 1400 percent, 1400 percent, incredibly high growth. And uh, it's still at a modest base compared to other parts of the world, so likely to see very fast uptake. And the hard part to measure is how quickly it's moving on mobile phones and smartphones. I think that's where a lot of the exciting action is in terms of spreading out uh, internet and web access. And why are internet prices so high in Africa? You know, I think that, uh, you know, that's, that's a question for the local countries to look at and the structure of their industries. You know, what can they do to bring in more competitors in some cases and traditional relationships perhaps between some of the comp uh, countries and, and governments. Uh, but governments play a very important role, obviously, in trying to foster a level playing field uh, with, with multiple players. And Africa expects broadband market, I think you mentioned this earlier, to grow 12.7 million users in five years from about 2.7 million in 2007. Are you expecting to hit that target? Is it going to be easy to get that? You know, to be clear, ICANN's job is we're the global coordinator of the domain name system, which, which holds the internet together worldwide, all the domain names, all the network addresses. So we, we look at the internet like a three-layer cake. The bottom layer is the pipes and plumbing. Those are the physical networks. The next layer is traffic and routing, and the top is applications and content. We're the global coordinator in the traffic and routing layer. Uh, so we don't directly opine or, 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 or drive the, the policies on internet expansion, but we support it at the traffic and routing level and working with all the country code operators uh, and other parties on network addresses and domain names. So when you Afri register cnbcafrica.com or a website at uh, .ke or uh, .tz or .sa, you're doing that through the, uh, the ICANN-related ecosystem of internet providers. So we don't, I, I would say we see uptake being very fast in Africa. I don't have specific numbers to share, Finley.